Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about glycogen synthesis, also known as glycogenesis. So the first thing we're going to get into is what glycogen is, how it is actually synthesized, what are the enzymes involved in glycogen synthesis. Then we're going to talk about where glycogen is stored in the body, and then finally we're going to talk about what the role of glycogen is in our bodies. So to begin, here is a picture demonstration of what glycogen is actually um, actually looks like. And as you can see, it's a very complex branching uh, structure with a core enzyme. And we'll get into what that core enzyme is in a moment. Now, glycogen, if you break down the word glycogen, it's actually the prefix glyco means glucose, and then the suffix gen means producing. So it's glyco uh, glucose producing. Now, in fact, glycogen is simply just a large polymer of glucose monomers and glucose monomers can be arranged in a linear fashion with linkages of alpha 1 4 linkages and um, it is also a branching structure as I mentioned before and the branch points are actually alpha 1 6 linkages now the carbons are all numbered in a glucose molecule and Again, as I mentioned before, the linear linkages are 1, 4, and the branching is alpha 1, 6. Another important thing to note is that glycogen um, has branching points at every 8 to 12 glucose monomers, which is important um, because it distinguishes glycogen from similar compounds such as uh, amylopectin. Now, glycogen because of the word glucose producing, it is in fact an, a rapid source of glucose and that's the key um, about glycogen is actually a rapid source of glucose and it is highly important because it actually maintains blood glucose levels. And during prolonged fasting, glycogen stores in our body typically only last um, about 12, uh, 24 hours or a little less than 24 hours. Now I mentioned before there's a enzyme in the core of the glycogen. Now this enzyme is called glycogenin and I like to call this enzyme the catalytic core and it's because it actually is an initiating enzyme. It itself begins the process of glycogen synthesis and it does, it, um, does this by actually autoglycosylating itself and it'll actually produce or attach chains of about 10 to 20 glucose monomers to itself and that's how this whole glycogen synthesis process actually begins. So stepping back, um, we start with a glucose. Now when a glucose enters a cell, it can actually um, be phosphorylated by hexakinase or glucokinase, as we've uh, learned before in other lessons, to glucose 6-phosphate. Now I always like to call glucose 6-phosphate the, the hub of many different signaling pathways. It in fact can uh, be used for several different uh, purposes. Now the first thing it, it can do is actually it can go back and be um, dephosphorylated to glucose by glucose 6-phosphatase if glucose is needed. However, it can also go into other pathways. One of them um, is that glucose 6-phosphate can be processed uh, into glucono 15 lactone and then shunted into the pentose phosphate pathway. And if you haven't watched that lesson, please do so because it's very important. Now, another pathway m pretty much everybody's aware of is um, glucose 6 phosphate can be processed to fructose 6 phosphate and then used for glycolysis for energy production. And um, the whole topic of this video, though, is that if it's not used for any of these pathways, it can be used uh, for glycogen synthesis by being shunted um, or processed into glucose 1-phosphate for gly glycogen synthesis. So if the glucose 6-phosphate is used for glycogen synthesis, how does that actually happen? Well, the first thing that happens is that glucose 6-phosphate is, act is acted on by the enzyme phosphoglucomutase to form glucose 1-phosphate and pretty much this enzyme simply just shifts the phosphate group from carbon 6 onto carbon 1 to form glucose 1-phosphate. Now it's important to realize that this step is a reversible step which means that glucose 1-phosphate can be reprocessed into glucose 6-phosphate if the cell requires free glucose um, and this is important 
um, during glycogenolysis, which will, I will talk about in another video. Nevertheless, if glucose 1-phosphate is going to be used for glycogen synthesis, what's the next step? Well, the next step is actually uh, glucose 1-phosphate being acted on by UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. Now, this is a very important enzyme. Um, it takes UTP and it activates glucose. This is what we call the activation step. Uh, UTP will actually attach a uridine moiety to the glucose to form UDP glucose, the active form. So once we have UDP glucose, what is the next step? Well, the next step is glycogen synthase. Now, this is a very important enzyme. And what it does is it actually will remove the UDP portion off of UDP glucose and add the glucose to the um, to actually a non-reducing end of a glycogen chain. So what it does is it'll actually just pop the UDP portion off of the UDP glucose and it will actually pop the glucose monomer onto a non-reducing end of a glycogen um, chain of glucose monomers. Um, and it does this again in an alpha-1-4 linkage. It forms an alpha-1-4 linkage uh, to f actually extend the glycogen chain. And again, the glucose is actually added onto a non-reducing end. So all the other, all the carbons besides carbon-1 are considered non-reducing. But again, it is linked at an alpha-1-4 linkage. So once we have a very long glycogen chain, where do the branching points come from? I mentioned glycogen synthase um, attaches glucose to glucose at, um, with an alpha-1-4 linkage, but I mentioned before branching points are alpha-1-6. So how does that happen? Well, if we can imagine a glycogen chain, a very long glycogen chain with a, glycogen, a glycogenin core, how does the branching points, or where do the branching points come from? Well, simply, there is something called a branching enzyme. Now, the branching enzyme, what it does is it'll actually remove six to eight glucose molecules off of the terminal end of the long chain. So what it'll do is it'll actually chop off uh, the last six to eight glucose molecules off a long glycogen chain, and then it'll actually attach that chain it chopped off back onto another chain of glycogen with an alpha-1-6 linkage. And that's how the branching enzyme actually produces branch points. So that's where we get the very branching structure of glycogen. And this is also very important um, to point out that with the more branch points and the more uh, free terminal ends that glycogen actually has, it actually speeds up the rapid release of glucose. Now, instead of having, in our example, instead of having one chain with one free glucose at the end where one can be removed at a time, now we have two points where two glucoses can be removed at a time. So it, the branching of glycogen actually speeds up the process or allows the cell to access more glucose quicker and faster. So that's why it is actually a rapid um, source of glucose. Now the final thing I want to talk about is the UDP and UTP. Now I mentioned before that UTP is used to activate glucose and uh, UDP, UDP is actually um, removed off of the UDP glucose once the glucose is actually added to a glycogen chain. So that UDP glucose has to be recycled to, back to UTP. And it's done so by the enzyme nucleoside diphosphate kinase. And this enzyme requires 1 ATP to uh, reform UTP. So I just wanted to uh, tell you guys that just for sake of completeness. So we've talked about the production or the synthesis of glycogen, but we never talked about where this is actually happening and where it's stored. Well, as I show you here, the two major sites of storage in our body for glycogen is the liver and the muscle. Now, with the liver, the glycogen is actually stored in the cytoplasm of the hepatocytes. And uh, its weight is about 100 grams 
And the role of glycogen in the liver is pretty much to maintain blood glucose levels. That's its main role when it's actually um, stored and used in the liver. And again, it's used during fasting. And this is um, this storage of, or this reservoir of glycogen usually only lasts for about 24 hours or a little bit less than 24 hours. Uh, and it, again, its main role is just to maintain blood glucose levels. Now with a muscle, again, if glycogen is produced in the muscle, it's actually uh, stored in the cytoplasm of the muscle. And in totality in muscle, uh, glycogen will actually come out to be about 400 grams of muscle mass is actually glycogen. And its role in the muscle is actually an energy source and it's actually utilized during exercise. So when you are exercising, when you are having acute periods of exercise, you begin to use uh, muscle glycogen stores and that is used simply for rapid uh, glucose, a rapid source of glucose and uh, a rapid source of energy. Anyways guys, um, that was a lesson on glycogen synthesis. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.